Okay, so by now you've installed and you've downloaded and installed VirtualBox and it should be running by now. Your next step is to go back to Google and you need to get a Linux distribution installed on your machine, on your vir VirtualBox machine I should say. The distribution we're going to be using is called Linux Mint. Linux L-I-N-U-X-M-I-N-T and push enter and you should see a page called Linux Mint at the top of your search results. As with VirtualBox, you can click on the download link over here to get directly to the download page, which we shall do. So now we're at the latest version of Linux Mint, the download page. And what we're going to do is we're going to download the 32-bit version CD because it's going to, going to take less time to download. So you're going to click on this link over here, the lower left corner here. We'll click over there. And we're going to scroll down a bit because we don't have the download link yet. We need to scroll down until we get to America. So you can use any of these. Uh, actually, you can use any of these uh, for what it's worth. Um, so you can use perhaps one of these. This might be the fastest one, possibly, or this one. Um, I'll just pick one of these at random. I'll pick Maryland. That's close enough near where, where we are. So uh, we'll click on this particular download link and this will start our download. It'll take a little while for this to download so um, once it completes we'll resume. So let's just, when you'll, you'll need to wait for a little moment while this downloads. I will do some time travel. Okay, we're back. We only have a few seconds left before this thing will be finished downloading. Once it's done downloading, we'll need to open this up inside a virtual box. Okay. Now, you might be inclined to click on this. Um, that's okay if you want to do that, but uh, that's not how we're going to use this. If you click on this, it'll take you... Well, I'll show you what it looks like. If you click on this, it'll ask you to burn this to an image. Uh, or burn this to a CD. Um, that's not what we want to do. So let's click Cancel. Instead, what we want to do is we want to go into virtual box uh, and we'll say new and we'll say okay welcome to the new machine virtual machine wizard and so we'll say next to continue what we're going to do is we're going to install Linux on our machine but not in a separate partition we're going to install it inside of virtual box so it'll make more sense when we actually uh, run this around so I'll just call this Linux Mint and We'll say next, and the base memory size, I'll just say it's going to be, let's say, uh, let's make it 1024 even. Um, that seems to be a decent size. Okay, we'll say next, and next we're going to create our virtual hard drive. So this is going to be a hard drive that's going to be uh, defined on our virtual computer. So we'll say next, and uh, it's going to ask us for what type we want. To, you know, we don't really care, so we'll just click next. Uh, it asks a lot of questions. Um, so it asks, is it dynamically or fixed size? We'll just stick with the default, say next. Now here's where we pause for a second. It says 8 gigabytes. That's decent, but let's just bump that up to 20 just in case we actually need that a bit. So we'll just kind of scroll around over there. So 20 gigs should be enough space uh, for everyone, right? So we'll say next over here, and then finally when we're done, we should see a summary that says we have about 20 gigs of space um, in our uh, virtual computer. So we'll say create, and create yet again. <laughs> Ask lots of questions. Okay, finally, great. Here we are, Linux Mint. Okay, now we're not quite there yet. We still need to do a few more things before we get this thing booted up. So on the right hand side, where I'm scrolling over here, what we need to do is we need to click on storage. So we'll find, if, if you start from the top, uh, the scroll bar at the top, it's right over here where it says storage. Click on storage, and it'll open up this new dialog box. Over here we need to click on, under ID controller, which is over here, we need to click on this empty thing that has a little CD looking icon next to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, 
and click on this thing over here that says set up the virtual CD DVD drive. So instead of burning something to a physical disk, we're going to do everything virtually. So we'll click on this disk image over here, and we're going to choose a virtual CD DVD disk file. So we'll go over here, and we'll select this one, the one we just downloaded over here. Uh, I previously downloaded a DVD, but you can get the CD, which is what we downloaded earlier. Okay. So we'll click Open, click OK, and this is where the fun begins. We click on Start to boot up our machine, and that's what I'm really talking about. We're actually booting up a computer inside a computer. We'll click OK. This thing is just some uh, boilerplate uh, that tells you uh, what's going on. Uh, it's going to capture the keyboard. The only thing that's interesting to note here is this thing here. Uh, for most of you, this should say Write Control. This allows you to uh, switch back and forth between the host, which is Windows, and the guest operating system, which is Linux. So we'll click OK. And it'll have this little screen here. All right. So it'll give us a lot of warning messages. Just say OK. And this is what Linux looks like when it boots. Now, although it says it's ready, it's still uh, plugging away at, at, at uh, booting up. You might see a few error messages here and there. That's no big deal. You'll see the cursor appear after a while. It's going kind of slow for me. Uh, Trust me, this is about as slow as you'll ever see it. Soon it'll get a lot faster. See the splash screen, and there we have it. Okay. So this is Linux Mint. Um, this is uh, actually just the live CD. In order to actually install it, we have to click over here where it says Install Linux Mint. So we need to click on this guy over here. In fact, we need to double click on it, so click twice quickly. Okay. Okay, new drivers, great. By the way, before we continue, let's maximize this. So let's make this go as big as possible. Actually, come to think of it, let's make this full screen. To make this full screen, you can say right control, which is the control on the right hand side of your keyboard, and say F. So right control F. So that means going to full screen mode. So we'll say switch, and now we're in full screen mode so we can see the entire screen. We couldn't see it before. Okay, so we'll say continue here. Alright, so far so good. Continue. All right. So this is where you might you might get a bit scared. It says there's no operating system. What would you like to do? You want to erase the disk and install Linux Mint? That's exactly what you want to do. It's not going to erase your Windows installation. What's going to do is it's going to erase that file that's acting as a hard drive instead of Windows. This will not do anything. Uh, so, uh, trust me. Uh, this is what you want to do. It's not going to wipe out anything on your own machine. So you'll say erase disk and install Linux Mint. So we'll say continue. And you notice that it says we have 22 gigabytes. Well, your hard drive has way more space than that on your laptop. So uh, you can clearly see that it, all it's aware of is that 22-ish gigs that we gave to the hard drive. So we'll say install now. And it'll take its sweet time to install the operating system. All right, so even though uh, we're in Massachusetts, at least uh, I am in Massachusetts, uh, we'll just pretend that we're in New York. It's probably easiest uh, to, to say that. So we'll say continue. 
close enough. It'll ask us various questions while it installs the operating system in the background. So I'm just going to walk us through how to answer these questions to get to where we want to be. All right. You'll just select the default one for this. So you just click on continue. You are using a US keyboard. So we'll click on continue. All right. At this point, this is where you want to enter your school supplied login over here. So mine is actually this is our our actual name. So I'll put my name in here. Okay. All right. So I'll just make this my the virtual computer name. I'm going to change my username though, just to be consistent. It's really uh, uh, makes a lot more sense to pick the username that corresponds to your login provided by the school. So I'm going to use mine over here. Okay, so Lawrence J. And I'm going to use my own password. So. Okay, by the way, you might notice that uh, when it says password, whether or not it's good or bad, if your password, if it says it's bad or okay, that means your password's bad or okay. You might want to change your password to make it better. Okay. All right. Uh, you can require a password to log in, or you can log in automatically. It doesn't really matter. Uh, whatever you prefer. But as long as you're picking usernames and passwords, you might as well be consistent with whatever uh, your username and password is uh, supplied by the school. Um, that's probably the easiest way to to go. If you choose something different, they need to remember more than one password. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. So so we'll click continue here. All right. So at this point, the installer is going to show you how wonderful the operating system is. Great. So while it's doing that, uh, you can sit back and relax. Uh, we're going to take a little break, and then when we get back, we'll show you what you need to do when we get near the end of the installation. So to do that, I'm going to switch back to Windows briefly. So I'm going to say right control. And I'll say F again. So right control F. And now you notice, by the way, even though Linux is running over here, we're still in Windows, right? We can run Windows applications. I mean, I'm running Chrome over here. And I got this other application, uh, or VirtualBox, just another application. So it's just running as an application inside of Windows. So there you go. So while it takes its time to continue, uh, we will uh, pause for a moment. You might notice that it'll say at some point almost finished copying files. Okay, now it says ready when you are. It'll take a little more uh, time for it to finish installing, but uh, there you go. When installation is complete, you'll see this message. Installation is finished. What you should do is you should say restart now. So you might notice over here we have a row of icons. Right down over here where it says uh, where it has a CD icon and ID controller. Uh, we're going to wait until this thing says it's ready to re reboot. Okay. It says, please remove installation media and close the tray, if any, and press enter. What it's actually saying is, uh, please remove the, the installation disk from the disk drive, from the CD-ROM drive. So I'll just push enter, and it'll restart the, the machine. You notice this now says it's empty. The IDE controller seems like it automatically ejected the drive for us, which is nice. After we wait a while, 
the system will finally boot up again. And this time, it'll be ready to go. Ready for you to use. So it'll ask for our password. It's the one we entered in earlier. Push OK and enter. Or just push enter. And finally, we see a greeting, welcome to Linux Mint, it's now installed. So we're ready to use this. So we can keep this dialog or we can make it go away, either way. So there you go.